Cool. So now go back to page 34 and let's get started so that we can, it makes much more sense to me to do that first so that we can understand it. So what we're going to discuss today there on chapter uh, three is called the estate in land. An estate in land defines the degree of ownership or the level of ownership or the quantity of ownership. It is an interest in land, but not all estate, not all interests are in a state. For example, a lien, which we'll get to, is an interest in property. It's a future interest. It is not an estate because it's not ownership. It's a future ownership, all right? So the estate in land defines the degree to which you own the property. And there are two estates. The first one, it's called a freehold estate. Freehold. The easy way for me to remember this, freehold means forever. So freehold is defined as an undefined amount of time, which means forever, could be. So when you pass property to another person in freehold estate, that means they have the right to own the property forever. They have the right to own the property in some undetermined amount of time. Whatever it is, we don't know. Could be two weeks, then they resell it. Could be 20 years, then they resell it. They could pass it through their heirs for several generations and be 200 years. When the transfer happens, there is no defined time of that transfer or how long that person's gonna hold that transfer. So that's the first one. The second one is called a leasehold estate, and they mention it on page 35 there, that's top line. We are going to talk about the leasehold estate in a completely separate, different chapter, because obviously you guys see the word there, lease, which means a limited time or defined time. So the difference between the freehold and the leasehold is based upon the time that the property is going to be held. This one is an undefined period, and this one is a defined period. And if you think about any lease, you know it's defined. Starts here, ends there. You know how long that lease is, all right? So freehold is the one we're going to cover today and it is characterized by an undefined amount of time or an indeterminable is the other word the book likes to use, amount of time. When we pass that freehold estate and we pass all five rights, it is called <laughs> Okay. Even I confuse myself. That's not hard though. You pass all five rights, it's called fee simple. And that does not say fee simple, that says free simple. Let me restate that to make sure that you guys get what I'm talking about. Fee simple means I'm transferring all five rights in a freehold estate. Freehold because it's indeterminable. The fee simple is explaining what rights I'm transferring. That's all five of them. Cleared that up? Okay. If I transfer all five of them in their highest form, it is called fee simple absolute. Now remember, absolute means everything but those governmental powers because nobody gets that. So we define the word absolute. Be simple absolute means you have all the powers there are in the highest form that you can own. Pretty straightforward and pretty obvious what that means. 
Now, here's where it starts to get fun. You, as the owner of the property, have the right of disposition. And we have always thought, I'll sell my land to someone else. You didn't realize that you have, since you have all five twigs, you can in fact limit those rights when you sell it. You can put a condition on the property. The legal word for condition in the book they use is called a defeasance. Defeasance simply means with a condition. I am going to sell you the property, but I'm going to put a condition on it and tell you what to do with the property or what not to do. So I have the right of disposition. I can sell you all of the rights in their highest power called absolute, or I can literally take that glass of water that I just short showed you and I'm gonna pour some of it out and not give you the complete right. You have the right of control. I'm going to reduce your control by putting a defeasance on it that tells you what to do. It is called a fee simple defeasible. First one was fee simple absolute. This one is fee simple defeasible, meaning there is a condition on that. And there are two common conditions that we're going to deal with. Now, this is not a law class, so we are not going to get into the differences between these two conditions, except for one area, and that's the one I want you to concentrate on. Because as far as we're concerned, that's all it's important, all right? So there is one called a fee simple uh, defeasible, and a fee simple condition subsequent. Fee simple defeasible and a fee simple condition subsequent. Not a good morning, is it? Rewind. Be simple, determinable is a defeasance. Be simple, condition subsequent is also a defeasance. So you've got be simple, determinable, and be simple, condition subsequent. These are the two for. What does the word determined mean? Determined means it will happen. So when I sell you the property, be simple, determinable, I am actually going to tell you what to do with the property. And virtually be simple, condition subsequent, also dictates what you're going to do with the property. The big thing between these two I want you to know is when that activity that I have forbidden you to do and you go ahead and do it, this property is going to revert back to me. Condition subsequent requires a court action for that to happen. Determinable is no court. It automatically reverts. There are other differences, but for this course, that's the important thing. Let me give you a couple examples so that it may help clear the point up. If you guys have ever been down to the farmer's market, downtown Indianapolis, it will always be a farmer's market. 
because when the farmer gave that land to the city back in the early 1900s, he gave it as a fee simple determinable and told the city, I will give you this property, but you must always make a place available for the farmers to come and sell their crops. So the city throughout the last hundred years has a farmer's market down there because that is what is required of them under the deed that was given to them where the farmer said, you must do this. And if you stop doing it, that property would revert back to that farmer. So he limited, he put a defeasance on their control. They, for example, couldn't tear that city block down and build a high rise building unless they had a farmer's market in it, I guess, <laughs> because that is how he gave the land. He poured all the absolute control out of it and limited the control under a defeasance so that they must always do that. You could give land to a church. As long as you're a church, you can have the land. The second you stop being a church, the land comes back to me. There was a young lady in my class several years ago who immediately in the back of the room shot her hand up. She's like, oh, I've got that right. I'm like, what? She's like, yes. My grandparents gave land to a church and as long as the church is intact and still operating, they get to keep the land. The second they either stop being a church or they move to another property because it got bigger or smaller, that land would revert back to her grandparents. Now, when the grandparents passed away, that right is called a willable interest. And the grandparents gave that right to her mother in their will. So her mother had the right in case the church ever moved or stopped service. And then when her mother passed away, her mother gave her that right. So she now has the right to receive that land and if you look over on page 36, it is called a future interest and they are willable down the line. And this young lady actually had that future interest. And she explained that at some point in her life, if the church is still active, she was going to will the right to her daughter. So those rights, to come back can be willable because they are a future interest. So on page, I want to jump back on page 34, figure 3.1, you see the fee simple absolute, then you see the fee simple defeasible. Then underneath that, it says special limitations with the possibility of reverter. In that box or right near that box, just write no court, no court, meaning that it automatically comes back. When the church stops doing what they're supposed to, the land automatically comes back. On the box beside it where it says conditions subsequent and the right to re-entry, there must be a court process because they have the right to re-entry. So the judge would have to, in effect, move that land back to them. And that is the one difference I want you to understand for this course, because we're not in a real estate law course where that we're gonna, we would talk about all the other differences. Be simple determinable requires no court action to reclaim the land, where a fee simple condition subsequent does require a court action and you have the right to re-enter.